All right. We are live with the Space Coast Real Estate Spotlight. We're here with Amanda and Jessica with Goosehead Insurance. And you guys stick around. They are going to be giving us some information about some updates on insurance on the Space Coast and telling us a little bit more about how they can help you. <laughs> All right. Welcome well, to the show. So, are you guys ready to go? Yes. Sounds like there's a bit of a delay. Did, did that go away? Oh, I, I I don't hear delay. Okay. Well, then let's go. <laughs> All right. So, I want to ask a couple of questions about Goosehead Insurance. Like, what is Goosehead Insurance and what makes Goosehead Insurance a little bit uh, of a standout from other insurance options that we have here on Space Coast? Yes. So Goose Insurance, we are a local broker that shops the market for our clients. We have no fees and things that make us stand out differently would be that we're built for the home closing process. And then also we have advanced technology and also a service team, which is great. So we can focus on getting the right policy for our clients while we have a service team that takes care of everything else. Nice. Yeah. All right. So what type of insurance does Goosehead offer? So we offer personal lines. We do home, auto, runners, jewelry, um, flood, kind of everything. everything. Yeah, we have 20 to 30 carriers we work with. They all kind of offer something different. So, yeah. That's awesome. So you have 20 or 30 different carriers that you can go to depending on the need for the insurance, the reason for the insurance. How quickly are you able to get uh, a policy uh, quote, I guess. So we can quote in an hour, like as well as an hour. We run it through our system. It runs through all of our carriers. It runs through all the rates. And we go ahead and we pick which one's the best. We go in, we like personalize the quote for the client. And then we're able to send it off right away. And then we can bind it same day. Okay. Yep. So it sounds like it's a pretty quick process. If somebody reaches out to you and they have a need to get uh, property and casualty insurance, which is, you know, standard homeowners insurance type stuff. They can get in touch with you, get a quote, and then possibly even get that policy bound in the same day. Yes. Yeah. All that same day. So if you're on a tight schedule and you need help, we got you. Yes, <laughs> we do. That is awesome. Good stuff. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about specifically getting insurance here on the Space Coast. And let's talk about um, property and casualty insurance specifically, since we're talking about real estate here. Um, what is, is one of the primary difficulties that we're having right now with getting insurance? And just talk us through some of that. Yeah, so right now it's mostly age of homes and like age of roofs. Roofs are a really big thing. Insurance companies don't really like old roofs. We do have options for people if you don't have a newer roof or your roof's like 20 years old. There's options. But it's expensive. It's going to be expensive. Like, we'll be honest, it's going to be pretty expensive. So they don't like old roofs. They want those new, brand new builds. Like, obviously, why would they not? <laughs> also, another thing is claims. Um, more claims have been happening. And as you would think, insurance companies don't love claims. So they want no claims. So when you have some, it kind of makes it a little bit harder to get it. Also, right now, there's a little bit limited options for carriers. Some are kind of coming in and out of the state. So less options makes it more expensive sometimes or makes it harder to get insurance. So once more come in, which they probably will be soon, be a little bit easier. Yes. What are some of the reasons why a carrier would come into the state and then maybe exit the state? Um, I would say they probably hurricanes. Yes. <laughs> Storms, okay. claims, yes. people filing all these claims. And they're like, whoa, we can't handle it. They back out. And then they'll come back in. Just depends on the carrier. Gotcha. Do you see a lot of that happening now? A little bit. One of the main ones, they stay. They can stay. They're good. But some of the newer ones, they'll probably come out of state for a little bit and then they'll come back in. Yeah. Okay. 
So what's one of the things right now that's impacting um, insurance rates and insurance premiums? I hear from a lot of my buyers that as they get their policy renewals, regardless of which carrier they're with, that they're seeing significant increases in those. What are some of the drivers behind that? Well, like we all know, inflation, that is a big one for us. So um, um, insurance fraud is another one. And then with companies leaving, we have less options. So with less options, then premiums are going to be higher. Insurance fraud was something that you had just mentioned. Can you talk a little bit more about that? What does that look like? It's kind of like when the roofing that happened a couple of years ago, when people came up to the doors and said, oh, we'll get you a brand new roof. Yes. And they kind of take over the insurance policy and then people kind of get, get, a, get their money taken. So then, yeah, that's kind of what that is. And then that kind of increases rates and that's what we are now. So are, are there people that are knocking on doors and trying to take over insurance policies? Um, <laughs> I mean, we have not had any, but we've heard of them, but we haven't. They're there. Yes. Okay. So there, there's definitely new laws that were put in place that will be fixing that problem. I'm sure. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's I know I'm hearing about that. Do, do you think that we'll start to see um, because inflation's coming back down, it's definitely had a positive impact on mortgage interest rates and different things. Do you, do you think that we'll see a little bit of some loosening or a little bit of uh, maybe better rates and better premiums here over the next couple of years? We're hoping, yes. We always say that when carriers are going to come in. New ones are always going to come in. People are going to try to come into the state. So I'm sure soon they should be dropping. Okay, sounds good. So one of the things that I always get uh, asked for when I'm helping my home buyers get insurance policies mm -hmm. is the wind mitigation and the four point inspection. Can you talk a little bit about what those two things are and help under help us understand why those are important pieces of information that you need and what the differences are between having them and not having them or having positive results with those and maybe having mixed results with those. Yeah. So I always say, always get the four point limit. So just having a four point limit, is going to give you more options in general for carriers because a lot of them require you to, to submit them anyways. So just having them in general is going to give you more options for the four point. It's just, you don't get any credits for it, but it is good to have. And for the wind mitigation, you will get credits for that. So what you, I actually did someone today and they saved probably $1,200 just from the wind mitigation. So there was a $1,200 annual savings because they had a wind mitigation? Yes. yes. And it's nice because they last for five years. So each year if you have to renew or want to change to a different um, carrier, you can use the same wind mitt form for five years and keep getting those discounts. So after five years, if I'm going to renew again, uh, you know, with Goosehead and you're going to put me with, you know, may maybe the same carrier, maybe a different carrier. Do I need to get a new wind mitigation then after five years in order for you guys to give me the most competitive rate? If you want the credits, yes. Okay. Yeah, because we have to submit the wind mit updated wind mitigation to any of the carriers. So okay. we will have to have an updated one. So where would the average person go about getting an updated wind mitigation um, when they're at that five-year mark and theirs has expired? Who do they reach out to? So any local inspectors. We have our own inspectors that we kind of refer out to, but there's a ton in Florida, great ones. Yes. So we just go to the local inspector and they're only around 100 bucks, dollars, I think. Too. Yes. That's about 100 bucks. But 100 bucks to save you thousands. So we and always have five bucks, so that's nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. So we, so we live in an area where there's going to be frequent uh, storms, maybe not hurricanes, but storms nonetheless. Um, what can you tell us about flood insurance? And if I get a standard policy through Goosehead, do you provide flood insurance as part of that policy? What does that look like? So flood insurance is not typically um, for like with the homeowner's insurance, but we do have a few carriers, probably about three to four of them that do include flood under certain circumstances. So maybe if you're in like a safe zone, they'll include the flood into it as well. But usually, no, it's not included. 
So what are some of the factors that'll determine if I need to have flood insurance or if maybe just as a precautionary measure, I should get flood insurance? If you're in a high risk zone. For but flood. how do I determine if I'm in a high risk zone? So they have like floods. If you go on FEMA, yes. you can go in and they could show you your flood zone mm -hmm. and that's what you know. Okay. Oh, good. So a lot of times when I'm trying to get somebody into a home, we have to go through getting their declarations page. We have to get their new policy bound with the mortgagee clause and all of that. And then sometimes when there's a storm coming through, we hear that we're in a freeze for binding insurance. What does that mean exactly? And how does that freeze get lifted? So this past hurricane season, we did have a couple of freezes. Just means we can't submit anything at that point in time. There's not much we can do because none of them are open. So they won't even let you. But if we're, they can let you quote, we can quote still. Some are still open for quoting. But in that, we can't buy for probably that specific date. But yes. they normally open up like the day after. So they're not closed for too, too long. And each carrier has like their own different date that they'll provide. Sure. So if I buy a house in, say, June or July, which is kind of the start of hurricane season, and there's no hurricanes for months, and then all of a sudden there's a storm coming through, is it too late for me at that point to make changes to my policy for hurricane provisions or to add in flood insurance and that kind of stuff? Yes, there is no last minute, but FEMA, you can do. It's just a 30, it's a 30 day wait, unless it's a brand new home. If it's a new home and you have like everything ready to go, they will give it to you the next day. So for new home, yes, you can get flood during hurricane season. But other than that, it's a 30 day wait with FEMA. So if I have to get flood insurance or if I want to get flood insurance, rather, I have to have a 30 day cooling off period, if you will, before it's actually effective. Yes. If okay. you're not like a new closing, if it's the flood is not needed for closing and you've already purchased the home, mm -hmm. the way there is. But if it's new, then they'll do it the next day. Okay. So just to kind of summarize some of that stuff, what I'm hearing is I don't necessarily have to have flood insurance depending on where I fall on the theme of flood maps. But yes. if I do need to get it, then there's some carriers that will package it. And there's some carriers that'll have it as a separate policy. Yes. So we have a lot of private flood carriers. We have a couple. Um, some of our insurance companies, they will, if you're in a flood zone, they'll require it. If you choose not to get it, you can sign the document saying you understand you're not getting flood insurance. But sure. So if I lived in an area that isn't necessarily going to need flood insurance, what's your recommendation around the average person having it? just as a precautionary measure. Is it a wise investment if they're not near a flood zone or is it something that they should do anyway because you never know? It's just, I think it's preference. Like if yes. you're in a real, an area where you know it's not gonna flood, you know, right? but that's just your preference. Mm -hmm. But if you're pretty close to the ocean, you think, okay, maybe it's probably worth the extra money. Sure. And they're usually not like too expensive. I think yeah. I'm really good at that was some places has like rise. I just did a couple of quotes and it was about $3,000 for the year, but usually um, you can get some a little bit under that. Flood zones are pretty expensive, but if you're not a flood zone, you can normally stay cheap pretty decently. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So are, are there any things specifically that Goosehead's involved with in terms of community outreaches or um, just any community involvement that you want to highlight for us today? No, we're, not. we're definitely starting to get out there more. So maybe be on the lookout for us because we're getting yes. with the community. Be on the watch. Be on the, yes, be on the lookout. Yeah. <laughs> watch out for the geese. Okay. Um, what do you think makes getting insurance uh, more difficult? Like what are some things that somebody could possibly not do intentionally, but have in place or maybe just say that'll kind of prevent them from getting a good good policy or maybe not even the best insurance uh, rates? Um, it's really just your house. And some we do run insurance for sometimes. So that kind of is if your insurance history, some carriers re require us to run a report to see what your insurance history is like. And that can sometimes affect your rate. Yes, if you've had several claims, yeah. even years back, um, they will pop up and it will increase your rate. I've seen them go up $500. I've seen them go up a couple thousand. 
And if you have no prior insurance and you're trying to get insurance, that's going to affect your rate. Yes. There's only a few companies that will take a lapse. So a lapse meaning you've had none whatsoever. Yes. Some will do it if you haven't had it within like 30 days, some 45, but after the 45 mark, there's only like, I think, uh, two companies or three that will take if you've had no, no insurance and they're usually higher. So you can still get it. It's just going to be high. How far back are they looking when they're looking to see if I've had prior claims and so forth? I would say probably the past five years. Yes. I'm kind of probably run it. Just so. So if I'm somebody that hasn't had any insurance claims in the past five years, I've owned a home, I've had insurance, there's been no lapse. When I go to get my new insurance policy, there are potentially breaks or discounts available to me in terms of what that premium looks like? Yeah, you will not be paying the same premium as someone with a bunch of claims and all that going on. You'd be probably lower. If you have a good insurance, if you have a good insurance score, and once we get to that part, sometimes it, it even drops down like a couple hundred dollars. Oh, okay, it's good to know. Especially good. with auto, sometimes with auto, you can you know, you bundle stuff. It can drop a lot. If you have no accidents, you get like special discounts. Yes. <laughs> so you bring up an interesting point. Let's talk about bundling. Do all of the carriers have situations where if you bundle your auto and housing? and different things that there's these package deals where you get discounts or are there only some of them that offer that sort of incentive? So it's only some of them do. Um, some work together, like ones work together. We have found that it's mostly cheaper to use two different companies, like to mix them because they just have the best rates. When you right. bundle, sometimes it can be more expensive, but we normally will check both. We'll check the bundle rate and then we'll check the rate if it's separated and we'll tell you which one's lowest. Awesome. Very good. Very good. Um, is there anything specific that you guys want to make sure that you touch on before we wrap today? I think we kind of touched on all of it. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you what I ask all of our guests. If you were to pick one thing, just one thing that you love about living or working here on the Space Coast, what is that one thing for you? Well, I just moved from Ohio. So I love it. There's, I have no complaints. I love the weather. I love the people. Everyone's happier down here. Everyone's more friendly, I would say, because they're not freezing cold. So I just love the atmosphere in this whole area, really. I would say that I like that I'm able to step outside some days and watch a rocket go up. Yeah, that's pretty cool. From my own job. Yeah, that's pretty cool, definitely. I don't think that yes. ever looks old, does it? Yeah, it scared it me. Not. When I moved, I'm like, What's, what's going on? <laughs> that was a rocket. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you both for taking the time out of your day to come teach us a little bit more about what's going on with insurance and some ideas for ways that we can get out there and do these things. So if we have any listeners or, or watchers that want to get in touch with you to talk about their insurance options, what's the best way for them to reach out to both of you? Um, email or phone number. Yeah. Email or phone number. All right. So we'll make sure that we put the email and the phone number in the uh, show notes. So if you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, that'll be on there for you. And if you're watching this on any of the streaming services, we'll go ahead and add that into the comments for you as well. So thank you both for joining us today. Goosehead Insurance. We had Amanda O'Neill and uh, Jessica. I'm going to mess it up. Stavrakis. Stavrakis. Yes. Stavrakis. So I did my best. But uh, thank no, you. Both it was good. It was good. It was yeah. good. <laughs> awesome. I did my best. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Thank yeah, you thank for you. having us. Thank you.